In this video, we're going to be unboxing and installing the Montec Air Cooler 210. If you like videos like this, go ahead and hit the subscribe button and the notification bell because in the next video, we're going to take all the internal components that you see in this video today and we're going to be installing them into the Montec ARGB 100 Micro ATX case. So let's go ahead and move on to the unboxing of this CPU cooler. The manual, accessory box, we'll go over that later. This looks like a fan. Yep, this is the fan. And this is the heat sink. It's got a nice faceplate on the front. I kind of like that. It's got a solid base plate. I like that. Oh, nice. It even comes with a screwdriver. And you know what's funny? Is this is almost the... Actually, is it? It's the same thing. Slightly different size. Alright, so... This right here is the screwdriver from the uh, Scythe Mugen. And this one's larger. But uh, these are great screwdrivers, man. I, I use this one literally in every single build. And on top of that, it is magnetic. So these are great. Looks like a uh, RGB fan. Yeah, it's got the uh, ARGB connector. There's the uh, three pin ARGB connector. And there is also a SATA connector here that ties into what looks to be some sort of a control for the, for the fan. There's a mode button, speed button, and a light button. Connectors. So the DRGB or the ARGB connector plugs into the adapter. Accessory box. So it looks like we have these screws, the spacers, the back plate, fan mounting bracket. Looks like you get a couple of applications of thermal compound and some more mounting brackets. So this is the CPU motherboard memory and NVMe drive combo. We have an i5-11600K. We have the ASUS Z590M Plus Prime Series Micro ATX motherboard. We have Team Group T-Force 32GB kit. That's two 16GB DIMMs of 3200MHz at cast latency 16. And we also have an ADATA. XPG 8200 Pro 2TB NVMe drive. That's Gen 3, not Gen 4. So this motherboard for the manual is socket 115X. And the first step that it states to do is install the back faceplate bracket. So the first thing we want to do is we want to gather the accessories that we need for a socket 115X. And we're going to get the, the faceplate the mounting brackets, the screws, and the spacers. I'm going to get all those ready right now. The second thing we're going to want to do is put the plastic ends on the back plate that is going to be fixed to the back of the motherboard. Alright, so here's the back of the back plate. You can clearly see that there's one side of it that's labeled front. So I'm going to assume that it goes this way. We're going to take each of these screws right here and we're going to put them in on the closest the closest to the center and what you do is when you get that into position you just take the plastic piece and slide it over that fits in pretty darn good look at that Back plate is in place. Now we just put the plastic washers on. And then the brackets. Oh, 
All right, now lastly, what we're going to do is I'm going to apply a thermal compound, and then we're going to set the tower on top of the IHS. Now, because this is a solid base plate, there's no pipes on the base plate, I'm going to go with the, uh, the P dot method in the center of the IHS because this looks to me like it's going to have no problem spreading over the top of the IHS. Here's some rubbing alcohol, 91% to evaporate quickly, along with a coffee filter that is lint free. I'm going to go over this just to be on the safe side. After all, there was a sticker on top of it. So it looks like there's a little screw on the top because I don't see any other way to tighten this down on this side right here near the uh, left side of the uh, motherboard. Take this out. And that's the reason why they gave you this screwdriver. This screwdriver is going to allow you to get in here to tighten down one side. And you want to tighten down one side a little bit and then do the other side, rinse and repeat. Now we'll take that stopper and put it back. Next step is to probably install the fan. Here are the brackets for the fan. One of those is AMD mounting brackets. I'll show you the fan ones. Here are the fan ones right here. They're just little wires. So I'm going to install two of these. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take and install this fan, ideally, so that the cord is tucked back here like this. So that not only will it be out of sight, but you'll also be able to utilize the uh, cables and better plug them into the headers. All right, so I spun around the uh, motherboard so I could show you the, the uh, top side of, this is the top side of the motherboard. So you have two connectors here. One connector governs the light and one connector governs the fan speed. So this one right here has four holes in it, and that one governs the RPM speed on the fan. That goes into the CPU fan header that's on the motherboard. This one right here is called the DRGB connection, and this connection has three holes, and that one plugs into the DRGB header on the motherboard for the lighting. On a lot of these motherboards, you're going to see two headers right near where the CPU is. One's going to say CPU fan, and the second one's going to say CPU optional. The optional is going to be if you had two fans set up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug the RPM plug that I showed you earlier into the CPU fan header. And then I'm going to plug the DRGB connection into the DRGB header on the motherboard. When you're done, don't forget to take off the plastic coating. Man, I really like how this fills out this motherboard. This is going to look great inside the Montec case. Go ahead and like this video if you liked it. Subscribe for more. And if you like this video, you're really going to like this one. So go ahead and click on this one. In the next video, we're going to be installing all the internal components into the Montec ARGB 100 Micro ATX case, which is actually right here. And let me tell you, it is an amazing case. Stay tuned.